Last week I created the first couple of versions of my new wingman map, DE Bear Guy. It's going to be a submission for a mapping contest, which gives me only a month and a half to finish the project. So the moment it was playable, I jumped straight into testing it with other people. Some thought it was good. This is the best shit I've ever played. Some thought it was uh, bad. One of the main weaknesses is how janky the double layer plays. Some thought it was just kinda weird. I'm not sure about this. I don't know. This was like the 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 only thing I could say something about. Um, I don't know. And today I'll go in depth over how I use this feedback to make the map more fun, balanced, and just better in every way. Let's begin. To Test number one was on the first playable version, and since it's the very first time it's being played, I was quite concerned that it might turn out to be absolutely horrible. It's very hard to tell if what you made is any good just by looking at it in the editor, but thankfully I'm not as washed as I think of myself. It played decently, and people found it to be quite enjoyable. Most notably, they like the site, which is kind of the whole point of the map, so that was a big win. Though, of course, there was also some negative feedback. For example, I was told that the CD timings on this upper bar choke point were too fast, or that the angles there and near the stairs were weird, and that this back area here needs additional cover. I would like maybe something to play here, like an after plant or a cold. I agreed with all of those points and updated the map accordingly to get it ready for playtest number two. Playtest number two was happening at 4 a.m. No oh, man, that's crazy. Uh, why? Uh, well, let me tell you about mapping discords. Basically, while some people are satisfied by playing their maps just with friends or randoms on the workshop, the go-to way to get some experienced players and mappers to check out your stuff and give you some quality feedback to really help you improve is to join a mapping discord and request a playtest there. I did most of my Bergain tests on Map Inc. since I'm the most familiar with it. It hosts playtests during EU hours, which work the best for me, and I like own this server, so of course I like it a lot. And now the second test I did on Eagle One. It's by the guys behind DE Flick and the Eagle One YouTube channel. They also are great for playtests, but are based in North America, which is why I had to wake up so early. There's also a couple more, like the Lenmo Dev Team Discord, who are the organizers of the event and I'll request the playtest there only once my map is a bit closer to completion to really make the best first impression on the judges. And in future I'll maybe also try to get in a test on Mapcore, which is like the most uh, official uh, one out there, being headed by FM Pone, the creator of Cash and many other notable mappers. It has close ties to Faisin and Valve, which is why if I'll ever want to try to get Bergain to be featured in game, I'll make sure to get some high level feedback and recommendations from there. In general, it's a good idea to get feedback from as many different communities as possible to make sure the map is appealing to everyone and you haven't missed anything and covered all of your bases. Anyway, let's get back to the second test. It went even better than the first one. Players visibly enjoyed the map and pretty much said only good things about it. Got it, map. Got it, map. The changes made based on feedback earlier definitely had a positive impact, and in general, the vibes were good. I would definitely play this a lot more. It feels like very natural CS, especially with the timings and the peaking, like the huge long angle. But uh, even though it might have sounded like the map is close to perfection, I decided to introduce some major gameplay changes for the third playtest. They were not based on feedback or any direct statements by the player, but rather more so on my observation that for these two last tests, the players barely visited the upper area. They went there for like one or two rounds per game and that's it. This told me that even though in theory there wasn't anything wrong with it, perhaps it didn't give enough of an incentive for players to try and go and play there. So I buffed it a bit by opening up this wall, which lets you easily check the backside before going there, as well allowing for this very risky drop that might prove useful on occasion. I also ad additionally moved the scaffoldings closer to the middle of the map, which makes going there take less time. And lastly I also added the squeaky here on site, which gives you more options when coming down the drop. All of these should make upper more appealing by giving it more control and options while reducing the time it takes to get to them. But as I saw from playtest number 3, players still didn't want to go there. Alright, let's buff it even more. 
I opened up this area near T-spawn, uh, which makes it easier for T's to rotate between upper and lower, and also it can encourage CTs to push the upper to get a powerful flank on the T's. But playtest number 4 still had the same issue. At this point I was kinda tweaking and thinking that maybe there's nothing I can really do here and this area of the map is just flawed and I, uh, maybe I should just redesign it entirely. But then I heard this. I think if you just, I think if you just like finish the upper floor and make it look a little better, people will probably come here. It's just it's a little rough. <laughs> no, I mean honestly, like, that might be half of the problem is that people want to be downstairs because it's pretty. Yeah, that that, that actually might be. Something I overlooked so far is the psychological factor, because sometimes players want to play an area less or more, and not even based on any gameplay merit, uh, but more so going off of the vibes. It's actually kind of like a big part of the whole level design theory, knowing that gamers are subconsciously attracted to lights or want to move from enclosed areas to open areas and sometimes vice versa. Now, taking this into consideration this time, I detailed the upper a bit to make it more appealing to explore. And perhaps even more importantly, I moved the T-spawn from here to here. Because also if you think about it, uh, in the original version just the fact that you had to run past the lower entrance to get to the upper entrance made it feel subconsciously inferior, like, uh, like an afterthought second option. While instead now, uh, right of spawn, these two feel more like equally viable paths at the start of the round. These changes, supported by me continuously cleaning up all of the angles and the cover across the versions, made the fifth plate a super fun with a good balance and a good variety of puffs utilized and in general made me very happy with how it played. Now, of course, the map is by no means perfect. I will still be playtesting it a bunch and updating it accordingly, but I feel like that from these five tests we really locked in its spirit and personality that will define this map's gameplay in players' minds. And since I don't plan any more major structural changes and we're already halfway to the contest deadline, I think it's time to start detailing the map and making it even cooler and prettier, which is something I'll get into in the next week's episode. Hopefully actually next week's and not two weeks like last time, but anyway, make sure to subscribe to not miss it. Also join the discords in the description if that's something you, you want, uh, I don't know, you want to see the map, something, talk to me, talk to me. <laughs> Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and tell me what you think about the map. I'll see you soon, but for now, bye bye. Oh, I think you fixed everything, this map is good to go.